<laughs> Hi, it's John Murdy of Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Hollywood, and today we have an exciting maze announcement. We're bringing Creepshow to life. What's really exciting about this is that we get to tap into the original 1982 film directed by George Romero, but we also get to tap into the brand new series on Shudder that's coming out this fall and bring some stories to life from that series as well. So all of us at Halloween Horror Nights are thrilled to be bringing Creepshow to life. It's going to be the most fun you ever have being scared. There are things in the corners of this world that'll drive you insane. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, as you guys saw, uh, we have us, Creepshow, and Graveyard Games coming to the event. Us is going to be shared between the two, Orlando and uh, California. Uh, today, like always, uh, well, for starters, on my screen, as you guys can see, I have special guest Sam. You yeah. know him as the co-host from the Mindless Horror Podcast and other various stuff on the channel, depending on what I make him do. Yeah, it's whatever you make me do. So that's that's fun. I he's, just show up. He's he's never been on East versus West, so what a warm welcome to yeah, him. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I'm I'm glad that uh, Mr. Uh, Anthony here and uh, Kicks and Whips, aka Eddie, let me on today. All right, and then now next we got of course Eddie. Eddie's of course the the co-host of East versus yeah, West, sure. and we're here to talk a little bit about um, our stuff. But today, special day. Eddie's got backup. Yeah. It ain't going to be two-on-one today. Eddie, you want to introduce our, our other co-host for today? Yes, sir. We got another uh, East Coast HHN YouTuber, my boy Adrian from Lost TV. What How's is it up? Going you doing oh. good, doing good. All right. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Hey, no problem. Thanks for being on the show. Eddie's got some backup today, so that's, that's good. So we're going to dive right into these um, HHN announcements. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about us. Um, us is coming to the event uh, as a property this year, and um, I'm very excited for this one. Uh, it's coming to both Orlando and California. Eddie, what are your thoughts on this? Um, so, first and foremost, uh, I would like us to all like, give our opinion on the movie. Because um, your opinion on the movie and then how it translates into a house could be two different things. Right? So, um, I thought the movie was good. I didn't think it was as great as people made it out to be, and I don't want to come out, come across as like a cynic or uh, being pessimistic here. Um, I do like Jordan Peele. I love to get out. The movie uh, Us was good. I'm kind of battling with seeing it translated into a house or a maze on the West Coast, uh, but I I have full faith in Universal Studios, so I, I think we could get some pretty good results regardless. All right, Losh, what are your thoughts on us coming to the event? So, like he said with the movie, I really enjoyed the movie when I went to go watch it. I thought it was really well done, really well structured. And the whole time I was watching it, in, my, in the back of my head, I'm like, this can possibly be a house. Every, from the scenery to everything. There's a lot of scenes they can pull from here, and I think it'll be pretty strong right 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 uh, Sammy I know you have a lot to talk about because this is one of your favorite 
Oh yeah, I love this movie. Huge fan. Jordan Peele knocked it out of the water. Go check out our. I think we did a review of it, right? I. On the podcast. Yeah, yeah. oh, on the podcast on our podcast we did a review of it. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. I loved Get Out. I was super excited to see us, and I I cannot stop talking about how much I really wanted to see it as a house. I really wanted to see it as an opening ceremony because uh, I really wanted to be chased with scissors. So this is the next best thing is being chased with, sciz- with scissors in a maze. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. I'm really excited to be able to walk through the mirror room um, and probably poop my pants in there um, as well as, you know, just see all the other moments and go like downstairs with the rabbits and things like that. So there's really, a lot really stoked. Yeah. There's a lot that could transform in this maze. I, for one, love the movie as well. Um, I remember we all actually me, him and my cousin went to go see it um, opening night. And we all had a good time. I remember leaving the movie theater, like, mentally fucked up for, like, at least two days. Definitely. Because I was still kind of trying to process the, the fact and reality of what if this is a thing. Yeah. And the fact that if a movie left me like that um, tells you how good of a director, writer, producer Jordan Peele is. Um, he did that with Get Out as well, where he made you think, what if there's a high society in life that's actually doing this? Yeah. Um, and... I am very excited to see them bring this maze to life. Like you said, there's a lot of great moments in this movie where easily can be transformed into scares from, you know, them, you know, in the very beginning, I'm assuming that's where we're going to start, of um, her as a little girl into the mirror house. Um, that, that alone is set up for scares. Um, and it looks like right now, I sent you the picture earlier from SoCal Exploring. It looks like that's going to be maybe the facade. I really hope it is. If it isn't, I'm going to be really disappointed. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, it has to be. Yeah, and, and the only other facade I can think about is their vacation home. Yeah. But I think that's going to be the opening facade because yeah. that's what's going to transport you into this universe and stuff like that. But there's a lot of uh, scenes leading up to the, the, the you know the movie's finale that are just great. And I really hope that Jeremiah 1111 guy is kind of outside. Yeah, and that'd be he'd be uh, either good outside, which I can see. Murdy does this thing every year at Horror Nights where he gives uh, a scare actor – a um, a passcode every night. So if you go up to the scare actor and, get, and receive the passcode, they usually give you something for free. Yeah. I've gotten a lot of things from it. I've gotten that over there. There's a James Franco house party from This Is the End. Uh, last year they were giving out the first purge stuff. So um, I got uh, the Staten Island pamphlet and a purge hat. Yeah. So I can see them doing that with us, especially with the Jeremiah 1111 guy. Uh, yeah. That'd be perfect for that, unless he figures it out some other way. But um, you know, there's you know, the, going through the movie, I mean, there's so much stuff we could see and stuff, and I'm very excited to see uh, what what they bring to life, some stuff that they had to leave out. Because I know with Murdy and stuff, when he sits down, there's a lot of stuff he wants to put in the maze, but you're supposed to sum a movie, an hour and a half movie, into like five minutes. So Definitely. Like, that's like one of the hardest parts of always. I think yeah. for both coasts, just creating a house, especially when it's a property, like a movie and stuff, I think the hardest part is summing up whatever – an hour and a half to two and a half hour movie or even a series into five minutes of a mix yeah. because that's impossible. Um, what do you guys want to see over there in Orlando in your guys' house? Uh, I guess we'll start with uh, Eddie. Um, here, we'll, we'll let the, the, the guest start. Go ahead. All right, Lash, go for it. Me? Um, personally, the one thing I want to see is the explicit language here whatever i'm sorry but f the police you know oh that was a funny scene scene. yeah like the seven second murder whatever they called it that scene i just want to see that in the house that's one thing in the mirror room obviously i could see them getting around that uh instead of doing fuck the police which i know they won't do um beach boys no i think murdy's i mean i don't know what they're doing on the the east coast here West Coast, or the, but on the West Coast, I think they're doing uh, the uh, Murdy. Someone had a tweeted at Murdy if, about that. Yeah, if they'll have that in there. Yeah, uh, but I it'll be I like the deranged version of it. I don't know. No, no, if... actually, no. I take that back. That's um, I got five on it. My apologies. I mixed it up <laughs> yeah. in my head. I was thinking, cause... go for it. All right. So, um, do all of you guys, and uh, of course, things I say and we all say are opinion based. But would all you guys agree that Get Out was on a different level than us? Definitely. Be, well, I, I feel with Get Out, it was more a thriller movie where it wasn't really... I mean, it, you could consider it horror, 
but it wasn't horror to the point that it was meant to scare you. I think it was more of a psychological horror where it was meant to mess with your head a little bit. Um, so that's why when Murdy and Mike Aiello had a panel at Midsummer Stream last year, when someone I think actually brought up that question where uh, or he says like I can't tell you how many times like a day I get a tweet saying are you guys doing get out is amazing stuff and and. They both, Murdy and Ayala both said, as much as they love the movie, it's just impossible to really turn it into a maze. Yeah. yeah. The, the, whole, yeah. the whole movie really takes place at one place, which that's not the issue. They've done mazes where movies take place at one place. Like The Exorcist takes place in a room the entire time, and they nailed that maze. Um, but the fact that that movie is not really a horror movie compared to us, where you know you see the tethered and you see... Um, people killing each other and stuff like that, you actually see violence and horror into it, um, is on a whole different scale. So that's why I think they went with us instead of, of course, Get Out, because they know they have more scares to work with, and they can really kind of play with it. Definitely. Gotcha. So I, I, only, I only ask that because I feel like, you're right, uh, us is definitely easier to translate into a house than Get Out. Get Out doesn't lend itself to a house, but I think Get Out is a much better movie, and us kind of wrote its coattails. And not to say it's not a good movie, it's just, I think some of the hype was Get Out hype. You know, no, Jordan definitely, Peele. yeah, that was, that was how it was. It was when, when Jordan Peele did this movie, um, people were, like, so obsessed with Get Out of how great it was, so they were expecting another, like, another Get Out. Like, not, like, the exact same movie, but you know what I mean, like, another, another masterpiece like Get Out. So I, I, exactly. I, could see, I could see the hype behind it. Yeah, okay. Well... Removing my skepticism and kind of focusing on what I'd like to see, there's two things that for sure, absolutely, I would need to see in this house for it to be a success for me. And I guess one of them is not see, I need to hear. I need to hear the soundtrack. The I Got Five on it needs to be playing, has to be playing, because that probably the best part of that movie was the soundtrack and their version of I Got Five on it. It was very was, sadistic and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. And then the next thing is the Mirror House. The Mirror House was another uh, uh, part of the movie where I found that the movie shined in its in its like uh, I, I guess in the the horror aspect of kind of like uh, anticipation. You know, the anticipation kind of built in that house, and that that was one of the times where I actually kind of felt myself getting freaked out a little bit. So those two things I I would love to see, and I think for me, need to be in it as well. And I, I think in general, those are two of the the biggest quality portions of that movie, so I think they're definitely going to put it in there. Well, somewhere. and I can tell you this, okay? They added the I Got Five on it in the trailer, so that's pretty much a guarantee you're going to hear it. Yeah. That was a major aspect of what made that movie, was the fact that I Got Five on it was playing in the background, and then they made it into a sadistic version. That was like a major part of that movie. That's like a lot of that's like a lot of the reason probably why people want to go see it. <laughs> um, yeah. Other than that, and it's Jordan Peele. But um, and I, I don't I don't doubt that the mirror room will be in there because that's what actually starts the movie and that's a missed opportunity for a scare, in my opinion. Absolutely. And that that links you to the tethered. I mean, you can't go. You have to go through the mirror room. Yeah, you have downstairs. to. Even if it's like at the end of the maze too, you have to go through that mirror room in order to get downstairs to the tethered because it, it's actually another major point in that movie where that's where we first see of course the two little girls meet um they sw they uh, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it which i don't know how you haven't seen it yet but um <laughs> that's where of course the two little girls meet that's where they swap and then that's where at the very end they had the final confrontation but they both yeah. go through that that mere thing so i it has to be in the maze whether like i said it's in the beginning which i would see that makes the more sense because you're, you're walking through the movie or if it's at the end of the, of the maze where you're going through it, going down to the stairs. I want to see how they're going to accomplish getting into the room, too, because it is downstairs. And I don't know how they can really accomplish that in the maze. But I don't know. I mean, I, I think it would honestly just be a transition where you just see maybe, like, you walk in from one area and then, like, at that area right there. So, like, this is you walking in and turning. And then I guess, like, that wall, you see, like, the, the, the stairs. That's the only yeah. way I can see they can pull that off. Yeah. And you, you know one thing that that would be crazy um, and, and would would be probably only possible in the mirror rooms if they they use some type of special effect with some like double sided mirrors where you see your tethered copy somehow and she you know smiles I mean? at you yeah like they project <laughs> why would she smile at me I'm a dude <laughs> <laughs> well that's just that would be the effect though man I mean 
They're not gonna have the. Act, I mean, I don't know. It would be he. No, but like you know how like in uh, in Harry Potter and some of the rides, they actually take a projection of your face and project it onto something else, and you see yourself. Yeah. If they could do that with a with a tethered projection that you see either entering the house or exiting the house, that would be freaking ridiculous to see your tethered copy. That'd be dope. Lash, what are you expecting to see in this maze? Like, there's a lot. There's a lot of good scenes in this maze and stuff. What What is one thing or a couple things you really want to see in this? couple things i mean so well, i went to see this opening day when it came out in theaters and the thing that i i went with um, nico if you guys know nico from my nico. channel as well yep yeah we always have this running joke ever since we started like ever since we went to that movie where we just yell like i can't remember his name i not remember his name you the guy with the beard the nico. dead no no the guy with the beard in the movie oh. <laughs> that's some. That's some Baku. That's um. <laughs> Baku. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, I was gonna say Baku, but I can't say Baku. I mean. Uh, what's his name? Uh, it's on the tip. Bombay. It's on the tip of my tongue. I know too. Oh my god. <laughs> now it's bothering me. I gotta look it up. Hold up. I'm gonna do the same thing. <laughs> so, but how he like yells? Yeah, his yell yeah, is like he's... creepy. Winston Abraham. Duke. Oh yeah, Abraham. Abraham. Is... Yeah, Abraham, Abraham is, is his um, character his name. Character. Winston Duke's his real name. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, so I just want to hear that sound. I don't know. It's a weird thing to want in the in the house. But well, no, I mean it brings a very creepy aspect, and I think that's another yeah. major part of this movie as well was the fact that they couldn't. A lot of them couldn't talk, so that's how they got around is with sounds. Yeah. And I feel like that's another opportunity that they got a, a missed opportunity if they don't put it in. That brings the maze to life more. I agree. I also would. I was thinking about this. I would love to m make sure that they have someone doing like ballerina uh, effects, like you see towards the end of the film, with uh, what's her name? I don't forget her name off the top of my head Red? now. Red? Yeah, Red. Yeah, like how she does all that ballerina stuff. Like if we're in the classroom and the scare actor is doing that ballerina work, what would that'd be, cool. be super epic. I got another good uh, idea for a scare for that too was have mannequins surrounding her, and then like a couple of them are actually real. Oh yeah. And then they pop out at you. Like they've done that before in the past with mannequins with the first purge, and yeah. it was like a, a great scare. And I know how they can probably accomplish uh, what Eddie was talking about in terms of like seeing your tethered self. I mean, it'd be using like a lot of the same effects that you would see like in the haunted mansion. Of how like they have yeah. the ghost come on to you, they could probably do the exact same thing in the maze yeah. when you come face to face with yourself. Definitely, exactly. That, uh, that, yeah. If they could pull that off, that's that'd be dope. So we can yeah. all agree there's a lot of stuff we want to see in this maze, and we are very all looking much. We all looking forward to it, um, and I cannot wait to see what what comes to HHN this year. Um, I'm really much looking forward to this. Um, let's. And we got last any any last things I want to say? Yeah, I, I'm gonna. Get a, a, a red, um, what's it called, like mechanics outfit? Jumpsuit. Uh, wear, yeah, jumpsuit, and wear my Michael Myers mask and look for my, my tethered Michael Myers. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good cosplay in a way, though. You know, yeah. that'd be that'd that's be fun. Smart. That'd be fun. <laughs> also, I think it would be cool if uh, if they have the little kid that runs on like all fours, coming through there, like maybe like use him as like, maybe use like a sliding effect or something like that. Would be pretty I cool. Kind of like how they did Reagan from The Exorcist. Sam. I just got to point out that you said you want to see a little kid doing ballerina and then a little kid on all board. <laughs> Yo, he, wants, he wants all the kids. I want all the kids. Well, it's me. like, okay, I get what he's saying, but it's like, it's a major point in the movie. Come on. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I, Wait, how old are you, Eddie? You're, you're hanging out with kids? Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually leave the spotlight to Orlando for a bit. It's gonna be uh, Graveyard Games. Tell us a little bit about this announcement. What can we expect at the event this year for this? Uh, what what the premise backstory of it is? I heard the only thing I've heard, uh, and that's from Lash's video that went up today, was the fact that they're gonna have a messenger thing with Orlando where you can actually chat yeah. and kind of get info about the the maze before you go in, like the little backstory. So tell us a little bit about what we can expect. Um, I'll let. Either of you choose who wants to kick it off. So, hey, Lodge did a video on it already, so I'll let him go into into the details. But yeah, that that Facebook Messenger thing sounds freaking amazing and a cool opportunity to change the way that we immerse ourselves into Halloween Horror Nights and the houses. So basically, 
um, from what I've read up on it, is you'll be able to actually have conversation with the kids that w went missing. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Lash, but You're good. The, the kids that, that went missing, you'll be able to have conversations with them and kind of figure out some of the backstory before you head into the actual graveyard. And then from there, I, I'll let you speak on it since you did a video on it already. I mean, you pretty much hit, hit it on the T there. Basically, we're talking to the, the local teams and the people, basically like the old man at the gas station that you see in the horror movies. That's basically who you're talking to in a way. And it's, it sounds like a great way to interact in the community. Like, in Orlando, when I read that, I was instantly thinking to what, what you guys were saying earlier about Hollywood with the, um, the guy that stands outside. Yeah. That's what I thought of in this. Of course, not a person, but a social media platform Yeah. in the same way. So I felt like it would be a cool way to get more interaction between everyone and more depth into the story of the house. Yeah, and then um, kind of the, the story is like these teens went missing, right, in a graveyard because they, they would go on to the graveyard and play games, and then uh, there was repercussions to their, their actions, and these teens went missing. But on that media platform, you're able to actually speak to them and I guess get some backstory as to what occurred before actually entering the house. So that's kind of it in a, in a nutshell. So for, from, a, from an original standpoint, I, I think this is, this is going like above and beyond in some really like out of the box thinking with an original house. Yeah. We Definitely, seen yeah. Like this, like, uh, down. <laughs> Definitely. It sounds interesting, um, sort of say, because I like the concept of it being like in a graveyard and stuff like that, which I thought was pretty cool. And um, I I'm excited to see how this maze plays out. I'm excited to see uh, if they're going to do like a kind of classic Halloween vibe, thriller kind of vibe, where you go through a cemetery and stuff like that, which, it, you know, that'd be pretty cool. But um, yeah, I'm excited to see what they bring to life. And it's going to be one of their sound stages, or do they not say where it's going to be? Um, I'm pretty sure. Oh, my bad. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's all you. Go ahead. It's all you, man. Uh, so I, I don't know where it's going to be. Go ahead. You, you tell me if you know. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be where Trick or Treat was last year. Okay. I think it's going to be in that parade building. I mean, the, yeah, the parade building. Yeah. But um, one, one thing that I heard, and I'm not sure where I heard it from, but uh, I heard some backstory as to how this this uh, particular house came to be. Uh, Mike Aiello, I, I think John Murdy might have been part of this as well. They, they took like a trip to like another country, I think it was like France or something, to like an actual like haunted cemetery for inspiration. And uh, it, it was like Mike Aiello and some of the other people from the creative team, John Murdy may have been a part of this as well. Um, but they, they went on this trip that was paid by Universal for like some inspiration to this like haunted cemetery where they, where they got a tour, which basically brought them to back to kind of getting this idea as to, you know, this, I, I guess the, the kids, disappearance and all that stuff is part of the lore that they have at this particular cemetery that actually exists. You're talking about Highgate, right? Um, I, I, I don't remember the name of the, of the place. I just remember hearing about, uh, about them going. That's pretty cool, actually, when you yeah. get inspiration. That was kind of like how they did for Universal Monsters last year, where um, they actually went to a couple of different graveyards to get the inspiration for the facade of the um, the maze where you see a bunch of like graffiti art and stuff and before yeah. you actually enter the actual maze like the part in Parisian courtyard um, it was an actual inspired graveyard I think that was actually in France just like uh, the ones that's the, the one you were just talking about and they also uh, looked at a bunch of different uh, graffiti that was uh, posted up there because at that same cemetery in France is where Jim Morrison is buried from the legendary singer from the doors yeah and um, what they saw on Jim's grave that kind of gave him inspiration for this was a lot of people, you know, taggers and stuff spray painted on it, like their respects and stuff like that, different arts and stuff like that. So if you guys go back and watch the uh, Universal Monsters maze at Halloween Horror Nights, you'll see in the facade everywhere, there's like spray paint and graffiti art everywhere. And that's where that inspiration came from at that exact cemetery as well. So I, I feel that that's cool. And if they can bring that cemetery vibe to life, that would be uh, a really, really cool. I mean, especially um, for, you know, um, like feeling cold like that. I think a soundstage would be perfect for this one because, like, it, I, when you go in the cemetery, you get that chilling vibe. You, Definitely. You feel like, you know, 
like death running a, a monk around you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, I think definitely if if they don't capitalize on that, that's going to be another missed opportunity. But uh, who knows? Maybe they will. Um, and I would like to see that as well as if if they got inspiration off that Paris um, cemetery. cemetery yeah. That they take some, you know, inspiration off the, like, the spray painting and stuff like that to give it a more realistic vibe. I kind of, when I kind of heard that it was called Graveyard Games, is that what it's called, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it reminded me of, I don't know, the 80s movie. It's called War Games. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I don't know why that was my first thought when I, th- when I heard about it. I have not, but um, yeah, th- this, this one caught us completely off guard because we just got a, a Twitter message saying. If we get to 66, uh, 666, 666, yeah, 666 retweets, <laughs> you're getting an announcement. I saw that. That was that was pretty funny. I think yeah. they had to kind of, kind of to just be, you know, not like you know, tied with that way they can keep up at the same time, same amount of properties announced um, with uh, Horror Nights and over here because we got another maze that got announced, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, Creep Show. Uh, and so that's just kind of their way of just kind of keeping up in a way, and so that, that way everybody's equal, you know. What Wait, I mean? so do both have two left to announce then, or? Well, I know we, we got two one. left. They have one. They've gotten more announcements than we have. We don't they have got, any scare zones announced. They don't got any scare zones, so they'll get oh. one that one yeah. scare zone and something else. So that means we're getting another original over here, and then I, I'm assuming that last one is going to be another shared property. So House of a Thousand Corpses. That. Is more likely true, probably, and that is on the the leaked lineup. Yeah. And so far, I went back and watched my leaked lineup video. Holy fuck, did that lineup have a lot right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing that I didn't really see in the leaked lineup was us. So I'm glad that that wasn't that. That was kind of a good surprise. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of calling that one at at the pa- panel for Midsummer Scream. I was like, oh, they're gonna announce us. That well, that's what I that's what I had wanted them to announce. Yeah. But then they were like. Creep show. Roll the video. Creep show. I, you know, and so I guess we'll transition into creep show. So before we do that, uh, guys, any last um, kind of, you know, you guys want to say anything of, you know, final thoughts of what you guys think of this maze so far? Um, no, but uh, so I'm excited for this maze. This one looks like a good one. I, I like the interactive portion of it. That's different. Uh, but one thing is we've gotten a lot of shared properties this year. So I, I think you're right. I think that last property is going to be saved for a shared property. Um, but it, it's, it's telling them what's to come. Like we're, we're becoming more and more in, in unison as prior years. We were very different. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, Orlando and, and, uh, and Hollywood were two different experiences. You guys always had majority all IPs, but now you're getting a lot, a lot of, Original property. Originals, we yeah. always had kind of like a mixture. I, I think we started more original and then started picking up IPs. So it's kind of cool the way that things are going. And then, yeah, you guys go ahead and talk about your original because I know that there's a lot of like fandom behind what what was announced at, at Midsummer uh, Scream. Midsummer Scream. FYI, my boys were at Midsummer Scream, so check out that video as well. They'll, they'll yeah. link it in one of the cards above. <laughs> <laughs> we were. Uh... Plug. We it was yeah it was a busy week for us on the channel. Um, huh, definitely, we've been, we've been posting panels, uh, interviews, podcasts, and then tomorrow we end it all with the LA Haunted Hayride um, panel and the Decade Brigade performance. performance. And then we go. Then Saturday we have a. Then Saturday we got another one. I gotta edit this, and of course we're gonna do one after this, uh, just to kind of get a midsummer scream after thoughts. Yeah, in a way, but, just to yeah. kind of give. Lot, lots of videos. Lots. We're of slowly approaching. Well, we're almost to episode fifty of the Miles Hard Podcast. So Definitely. I'm, try, I'm trying to get us there. Yeah. And I would love to do it with TLAV on the fiftieth episode, but I think we're gonna have to record forty nine with them unless we just bring some bullshit out like in the next couple of weeks of just doing <laughs> podcasts. Yeah, we we we'll probably do that. Yeah. Um, but let's talk a little bit about Creep Show. Now we got Creep Show at Midsummer Scream. It was uh, it was kind of a, a shock. I mean, it was part of the leak lineup as well. Um, but what we saw with Creep Show was, so John came out. You know, he does his normal panel. He usually does it with Chris Williams, and it was kind of a little bummer uh, to see Chris. That was he wasn't there. Chris, yeah. if you guys don't know, is the uh, the art director for Halloween Horror Nights. So he's the one that draws out and pretty much creates the layouts for all the mazes and stuff. And then him and Murdy decide what goes in, what doesn't, what works, and what doesn't. So he's the one that pretty much draws up everything concept wise, and you know. Murdy tells him, this is what I want. Chris goes in with his team, and they draw it up, and then they show back to Murdy. Murdy's like, yep, that's it. 
So he's the one that designs all that stuff. So he wasn't there. I think he wasn't feeling well, and that was kind of a bummer. I wanted you yeah. to kind of get to know a little bit of who Chris was and stuff. But you got to know more of John. So that's yeah, good. that's good. Um, but we got Creep Show announced, and if you guys don't know what Creep Show is, it's actually a comic book, graphic novel, if you if you say, that was created by Stephen King. It was kind of his version on Tales from the Crypt. Um, because at the time, Tales from the Crypt was a, a big thing, and it was an anthology series where every show, it was a different episode. Um, we know a little bit about that from Kim and Ket Stay Alive. When Definitely. We to their podcast. Um, so this was Stephen King's take on Tales from the Crypt. He had his own host, which was the Creep, and Tales from the Crypt, they had their own host, which was the Crypt. Crypt Keeper, yeah. Yeah. And um, so in, in, this, in this movie, we saw various stories, various little horror stories that lasted about 20, 30 minutes long, maybe 20, 15. Yeah. Um, and they were all really good. Even Stephen King himself makes a, a cameo appearance in one of them, which actually is going to be introduced into the uh, maze where the mold, or he was talking about the mold story. Yeah. The moss and all that. Yeah, Stephen King actually cameos in that. Oh, wow. he, he plays the old man, so um, I'm very excited to see that. But the the stories we're getting, so this is going to take place on George Romero's uh, classic 1980s film, along with the new Shutter series yeah. that is being produced by, um, what was his name? Uh, I don't know. I forget the guy's name. Uh, ooh, Greg Nicotero, who yeah. was, if you guys don't know who Greg Nicotero was, for the longest time he was a producer on The Walking Dead. Um, and after he left that show, kind of just went to shit. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there right now. Um, I, I think at least. Um, so the, 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 the uh, ugh, I can't talk today. The stories we're going to see in Creep Show are Father's Day, The Crate, They're Creeping Up on You, Gray Matter, and Bad Wolf Down. Now, um, Father's Day, The Crate, and They're Creeping Up on You are actually in the original Creep Show movie. Yeah. So if you guys want to check that out, that's out now. Um, and definitely check it out. But I'm going to read you a description of each uh, story as to what you can kind of get of an imagining of what's going to happen in these. And Grey Matter and Bad Wolf Down are actually from the new adaptation of the movie. So, uh, Father's Day is it goes as follows: A crew wealthy uh, partridge murdered by his long suffering daughter rises from the grave as a maggot infested corpse to take revenge on his inheritors. So the dad comes back to life on Father's Day, uh, dead and stuff like that, and demands his like Father's Day cake and stuff like that. And at the end of the at the end of the uh, short, we ended up seeing um, spoilers for if you guys haven't seen Creep Show, by the way. Uh, at the end of the short, we ended up seeing, I guess, he chops off her head and makes it as the cake and stuff like oh, that. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was something they were actually talking about in the maze. That was one of the concepts. I know I know they talked about the art, I mean, about the cake, but I didn't really <laughs> cut her head off. It was the head, yeah. And I think she's still alive somehow. I don't know how they do You know how horror does that. It's a movie. It's a cheesy kind of comic and stuff like that, which I like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a little technical difficulty, but we are back we're talking still about Creep Show, so... We were talking about, of course, uh, we're going to get, uh, like I said, three from the movie and two from the Shutter series. Yeah. And then um, we're going to be getting, of course, uh, the next one, which is The Crate. The Crate, yes. Now, The Crate was actually one of my, always my favorites, so it, it goes as follows. An unlucky janitor at a small East Coast college finds a long-forgotten shipping crate containing a uh, ravenous beast. Ravenous. Ravenous. Uh, it's not a raven. That's been it, it, hibernating for over a hundred years. You want to fight, dog? Well, no, no, no. You'll win. I know. You'll win. Anyway, um, so this beast looks cool, and they showed a little kind of scale of how they're going to accomplish that. Yeah. They're going to have an actual person in a, con uh, in a costume, and, you know, it's going to be... It's actually, like, up to my knees, that's how Murdy was saying. Yeah. So, you know... Your knees or his knees? Whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> Probably my knees, too. I mean, fuck. Um... <laughs> But it's going to be one of those things where uh, he's going to be in a costume. His feet's going to be sitting on top of the crate, but the actual person's going to be inside the crate. Yeah. So that's going to be pretty cool. I'm curious to see how that one looks. Definitely. The next one, they're creeping up on you. Uh, uh, eccentric billionaire in a hermetically sealed, germ-proof Manhattan penthouse apartment experiences a terrifying pest problem during a citywide blackout. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to this one. That one looks... I'm not either, only because I'm not a fan of cockroaches. Yeah, I'm not a fan of... I mean, I don't <laughs> mind cockroaches, but like a million cockroaches. Uh, luckily, they're going to be projection systems. But if you guys aren't familiar with this one, the, so the blackout happens, this millionaire, he's like a germaphobe, and he's, you know, he hides out in his freaking... Uh, his uh, apartment, and uh, when the blackout happens, like roaches start going through his systems and stuff like that. So I'm not looking forward to that, but it is what it is. Yeah. I've I've went through worse. I mean, if I can do the face huggers from Alien versus Predator, which I absolutely hate, which is that thing right there, um, I could do this. 
<laughs> I think the face huggers are worth worse in my opinion. Um, Sam Gray, are you going for sure. What happened? Is Sam going for sure? <laughs> yes. Yeah, as long I mean, as long as my budget you know does well, we'll we'll be there. Okay. So I mean, as much as I don't want to be there, I told him he had to get a thousand <laughs> subscribers. We're almost at four hundred. I know he's almost at four hundred, but I'm gonna give in. Will, will you be doing every single house? Uh, I think the plan is to get a frequent fear, so I can do every like house. Sometimes, yeah. Um, <laughs> so stay tuned for uh, scaring Sammy. I know, I know he won't. <laughs> so he won't be there with us opening night because I'm actually getting the. Uh, express pass with my girlfriend so we can go and cover the event that night but i think either the weekend of or the next weekend we're gonna go and we're gonna take him um and we'll see how he does yeah and then we'll, we'll try to go closing night as well i know and i could say it I, I said it on social media and i'm gonna say it again we won't be recording any mazes at any of the haunts this year unless given permission um only because i know uh universal studios are really enforcing that uh, this year, yeah. ruled this year like very much like than they have in the previous years so out of the respect for them and their rules and the hopefulness of building relationships with them in the future um we are not going to be filming anything unless we are given permission to so but we'll be in the scare zones we will be in the, i could i can film the scare zones i can film anything outside the mazes um yeah maybe reactions in the mazes i am not too certain on that yet only because we have to do not only scaring sam but we have to do um Try not to get scared. Challenge twenty nineteen. I don't know how. I, I don't. I, You're so not I, gonna participate. I know. I'm just I gotta. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta do one versus three again. <laughs> not lose it again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I lost the first year. I'm trying yeah, to redeem myself. Yeah, we have to curve it like year. probably a hundred. Yeah, uh, gotta. I gotta. I gotta win. <laughs> you gotta bring home the belt. And I thought the numbers game was in my advantage. It was one against three, so I had more of the chance of someone getting scared. I gotta get him early on. That was the thing. We went at the end of the month. And they were, like, way more used to it than I was. Yeah. So I got to get them early on. The but, next, uh, but, but back to the back to the Creep show. <laughs> the next thing is called Grey Matter. It's an alcoholic factory worker unknowingly uh, ingests a strange uh, uh, mutated uh, mutagen in his beer that unleashes an alien fungus that takes over his rundown, uh, his rundown apartment and his entire body. Yeah, I'm super excited for this because... You can't figure out what's gonna happen with this, yeah. Because it does the Shutter Show doesn't come out until like late September. I think actually that is that was on the original. No, it shouldn't be. Well, I mean, you gotta you gotta remember though they're redoing it. Oh, okay, so maybe it was. So I think they're just revamping it and making it better than what it was. Yeah. So and then I think maybe they maybe they're doing original show. I don't know how they're doing the show yet. So, but this one actually I remember this is the one I was telling you that Stephen King had the. Oh, okay. With. So, yeah, this one is pretty cool. He he comes home, and he's got this, like, alien fungus all over him, and it's starting to grow in his apartment and stuff. And eventually, I think it just gets way out of control where he looks like the swamp thing. And he just, I think he ends up just killing himself. But he when he tries to kill himself, it just wouldn't let him. Oh, wow. So it's like Venom. Kind of live like that, yeah. Um, the last one is called Bad Wolf Down. It's, it's a, uh, a decimated American army platoon overwhelmed by the German army during World War II unexpectedly turns into a pack of werewolves during a full moon. I'm excited yeah. for that one. So it's the opposite of what is that one movie that came out last year? Uh, the one with the zombies. The movie with the zombies. It was a World War Two movie. I think it was Abrams who did it. Oh, you're talking about <laughs> you're talking about Overlord. Yeah, so it's the opposite of Overlord. Overlord wasn't more about zombies. Overlord was about mutating mutated uh, uh, World War Two experiments, which is actually true. I've heard. Yeah. Um, I mean, World War Two when they when they try to mutate the their soldiers to make yeah. them like super soldiers. In super a war. soldier, uh, like Captain, Captain America. America. <laughs> um, yeah. So this one is gonna be werewolves, and I I'm a huge fan of werewolves. I love werewolves. Yeah. So this this one will be fun, and then of course it ends with the uh, prologue, or the epilogue. Epilogue. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna be of course we're gonna hear the creep uh, the, the creep come back. Yeah. And he's gonna you know exit us, and it's gonna be uh, a yeah. lot of reminiscent. They said it's gonna be a lot of reminiscent colors to the comic books. Um, and and the show, uh, one final scare there, probably. And the final scare, yeah, which will probably be the creep himself. And we did see a sculpt of him. He looks pretty good, and I'm, I'm very excited for this maze. Definitely. I, I want them to play Bark of the Moon. But Bark I of the Moon. That'd, that'd be, be dope. <laughs> yes, that'd be dope, dude. <laughs> Fucking Ozzy. I'm down for anything Ozzy. Come on. Um, but, yeah, that is Creep Show, and uh, that is going to be exclusively at Halloween Horror Nights, California, Hollywood. Best Coast. Um, 
<laughs> Starting the war already? Starting the war. Mexico? Next coast? Mexico. Duh. Next coast. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Got all the best ones out here. Rey Mysterio. Boyka, boyka, bro. Boyka, boyka. Um, so that is the um, that is East versus West for today. We're gonna give our final thoughts on everything announced. So we got us, uh, Graveyard Games and Creep Show. Everyone uh, will start from the East Coast side with Losh. And we'll make our way to the end of the West Coast. No, so we'll Losh, go, we'll go uh, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. So we got Losh. So what do you think of us in Graveyard Games? Final so, thoughts. I think it really adds to an already strong lineup. Graveyard Games gives a nice addition to our originals. Us is a nice addition to the IPs, and I feel like it's just going to be a really strong year. It's backpacking off the last year's '80s theme, so should be fun. Should be fun. You heard it here from Losh. You'll, you can expect to see Losh at the event this year. Are you going opening night, my friend? Opening weekend. <laughs> opening weekend. He'll be there, so look out for Losh TV. They'll be covering the event. Eddie Tamet, what are you thinking, man? What's your thoughts for this year? So, overall, a great year. Some great announcements. Um, some big IPs. So, regardless of what my skepticism is with us, it's a big IP. Um, and we got huge IPs, Stranger Things, Ghostbusters, Us, uh, what's it called, Classic Monsters. So they're, they're bringing out the big guns. So I could only imagine this year's gonna be amazing. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that interactive Facebook Messenger uh, portion of, of that new house that was announced works. Yeah. Uh, it sounds really cool, sounds really immersive, and that's really what Universal does. It's an immersion. Uh, you kind of feel like you're in a different world. So, and, and mostly when it comes to events like Halloween Horror Nights, you know, it, it really removes you from the, the world and makes you think that you're somewhere different, somewhere where, you know, murderers are running wild. So I, I think we got some great IPs. I'm going to try to re remain open-minded uh, with us. I, I think it, it can be great. Uh, I, I just, I, I guess personally wasn't calling for it. So, but... Um, uh, a couple things this year we, we've had the leaked lineups have kind of been so spot on that the the excitement is is drained a little bit um, even though I'm still really excited about the houses and then on top of that just going back to what I was saying we, we've had a lot of mutual announcements which is interesting to see how the the events have kind of developed and we, we're becoming more unison than we've been in the past Definitely, definitely. We're looking forward to it. Um, Sammy, final thoughts on uh, what we've got announced over here on the West Coast. Oh, man, it's been – there's a lot of, like, announcements. I, I do agree with Eddie. We got the backpacking 80s theme again. Obviously, Stranger Things leading the way, Chapter 2 or Season 2, whatever they're calling it. Season 2, yeah. Um, so we have that leading the way. Killer Clowns of Outer Space, from Outer Space, Ghostbusters, um, us, which has some 80s in it, but not really, kind of mod more modern. The story starts yeah. with the 80s. Yeah, it starts that, with hand, Hands Across America. And if you watch uh, TLV's latest video on that, um, or when they interviewed John Murdy at the event um, at Midsummer Scream, he actually touches on that. He says, yeah. you know, this it starts with the 80s and stuff, and it's reminiscent to the 80s. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, because he talks about it in that video, just summing it up really quick. Yeah. Because I did watch it. The 80s, they were trying to be the 50s, and we're yeah. now trying to be the 80s, yeah. um, basically, in a nutshell. I'm super excited. Obviously, I'm super stoked for us. Um, I love the movie. I'm super excited for that house. And if it disappoints me, I'll probably cry. Not just of fear, but of sadness. So, yeah, uh, super excited. Can't wait to go. What are we looking at? September 12th, is it open? September 13th. 13th. Oh, preview nights the 12th, yeah. yeah. Creep Show? What do you think about Creep Show? Creep show. I'm really excited. I've never seen the. So they were have to uh, watch. We'll yeah, watch we're it. gonna we'll watch it. Yeah. Um, because obviously we got to get all our prep up for that. Yep. Um, check out our live stream. That's good up. that he brought that up. We August 24th. Well, August 17th we're doing a live stream with TLAV. I don't know what we're watching yet. Yeah. Um, I gotta talk to Thomas more about that. But when we find out, uh, we'll let you know as soon as possible. That is next Saturday. So look out for that as this recording. Uh, and then August 24th, me and Sammy will be doing a live stream here in the studio, um, kind of debuting our studio on a live stream, yeah. our new setup and stuff like that. So look out for that. Um, depending on what we watch, I'm going to have to wait until we do the live stream with TLV 
in order to find out what we're going to watch, but it's yeah. probably going to be something HHN related because I know I want to start doing a lot of preparation, getting you ready and stuff like that for yeah. the event. So uh, um, super excited about that. Um, super excited that there's a pro- – uh, you know, I'm happy with all of the properties that are non-movie-based, um, but I'm really excited kind of for Creep Show because it's a movie I haven't seen. It's a TV show I won't probably see prior to going. Yeah, um, I don't know. And so I'm kind of excited for that, and I really, I'm really really excited for the facade of entering into a comic book. I definitely want to check out that TV show, and if it comes out prior to the event, we're going to probably, I'll, I'll sit us down and watch it. Uh, yeah. It depends, at least the episodes that are going to be in it. Yeah. That way we can kind of get a feel for what we're seeing. But um, yeah, I'm very excited for Us. Us is, like I said, we talked about in the beginning, it's a very good movie. Psychologically, it's, it's amazing and stuff like that, and the scares are top notch on there. So very much looking forward to that. And then I'm also very much looking forward to Creep Show. Um, I was a fan of the movie that George Romero made, and I remember watching it as a kid. So I can't wait to see what uh, they bring to life in this maze uh, from the five stories that we got at, at top of the, uh, the prologue and the epilogue. Yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to that, um, and I and I can't wait for this event. Like you said, it's a stacked. Uh, uh, Lost said it b- at the best. It's a they're backpacking off the '80s, and uh, this is the first or this is the year that we're actually getting a lot of '80s properties. So we got. A, a quick recap of what we got over here in Hollywood. We got uh, Stranger Things Season 2 with a little bit of Season 3 at the very end. We've got um, Holidays in Hell, which is going to be a, a sinister take on all the holidays. We've got Universal Monsters Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. Um, kind of, It might be maybe a sequel from Universal Monsters. Not sure yet. Um, then we got Ghostbusters. And then Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We've got Us... Uh, uh, creep show and the full time Walking Dead attraction, which yeah, with the more zombies. We're not gonna really count that. That's all year round. So if you want to see that, we'll go all year round. But uh, I'm I'm excited for it though because the last time I was at Universal, it was the Universal Monsters, the House of Horrors. Yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of excited. Um, I'm also very terrified because when I did go to the Universal Monsters or House of Horrors, whatever it was called, yeah. I got caught at the end because there was that final scare. Yeah, and I could I don't know why, but like I froze in my pants. <laughs> Um, so I'm really not excited because I'm probably going to freeze in my pants a ton of times. But. Um, we got two more mazes to be announced. Um, Any speculations? So I'm going to I'm gonna stay with House of Thousand Corpses, and I think that's a very good opportunity to promote Three from Hell. Yeah. Especially because that's coming out this, uh, this I think, October or November, I believe. Uh, so I think it's a very good way to promote Three from Hell. Uh, if they did either House of Thousand Corpses or The Devil Rejects or both, yeah. um, it'd be a great way to kind of lead you into Three from Hell. Um so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on that one, and as far as the very last one, because there's two in the tram garage area. Yeah, that's where us will be. That's where, that's one of them will us, but I don't know about the second one. It can either be an original property that he's created, created, or we could be getting another exclusive IP only for over here. If we get Halloween 2018 in your face, Eddie. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> Eddie will be mad about that. I'll be that. kind of upset, though, if it's an original, because I want to see all the artwork and stuff behind the originals. Yeah. I think that was really cool at Midsummer to be able to see the look look behind, like, Holidays in Hell. Yeah, I love when he does that. But, yeah, the event's looking stacked. We cannot wait. Uh, thank you guys for watching another episode of East vs. West. You guys keep constantly supporting this show, and we love making it. We love doing it. Yep. Um, so thank you very much for, for tuning in to another East vs. West to get your uh, dose of both coasts. It's the only show on dose YouTube. Dose of both coasts. That's good. Dose of both coasts. Yeah. Hey, say that, that Say that five times fast, man. That's um, – yeah. so, yeah, thanks for tuning in. This is the only show on YouTube that does an East versus West analysis breakdown where you get – people from the west coast talking about their event people from the east coast talking about their event and we get to compare and contrast and stuff like that so be sure to uh follow us on youtube everyone that's in here for starters we'll start down with uh eddie tainment go follow him on youtube he does everything uh theme park related everything you know anything and everything he can do uh of course this is the horror season so he's focusing majorly <laughs> on his horror stuff so go subscribe to eddie tainment if you're not yet subscribed lost tv He's our guest today for on the East Coast, helping Eddie, siding with Eddie today. Uh, go subscribe to Lost TV. Uh, he's got a lot of great content out right now. Uh, follow him on all of his social medias, uh, at King Losh. So, uh, yeah, keep up with all his good stuff. Of course, we're the Knights of Horror. Uh, we do the Mindless Horror podcast. We do a lot of things around here. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I don't even know what we're doing half the time, but you just know, show up. Just show up. That's all you got to do. That's ninety percent of it. That's ninety percent of it. So thank you guys for watching East versus West. We will see you guys in the next episode, hopefully coming soon, because uh, announcement season 
is rapidly coming out now that the event's coming closer. So we'll see you guys in the next one, and bye. Deuces.